driver is uh, showing some obscure driving, possibly intoxicated. Currently doing 45 miles an hour. Zone through here is 25. Oh! Subject just hit the curb. Correction speed limit is 15. I'm about three quarters of a mile into the arches just before the gate. Place your vehicle into park and go ahead and turn it off for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, park? Oh, it, it isn't parked yet. Sorry. Okay, turn off your engine. Go ahead and set your keys on the dash for me. Alright. What's your guys' names? Gabby. I'm Brian. Gabby, Brian, okay. What's going on? How come you're crying? I'm just crying. We've just been fighting this morning. <laughs> Some personal issues. It was a long day. We were camping yesterday and camping got supplies and stuff. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I hit the, the bump there. <clears throat> I was distracting him from driving, I'm sorry. Can I get you to step out of the vehicle for me, man? Yeah. Just hang tight right there. Um, do you mind if I take your keys and just put them on your hood? You got it, buddy. I'm so Thank sorry. You. Oh, no, you're fine. I'm going to go ahead and close your door. Okay. Why don't you come over here? SO229. I have the female that was on the mm -hmm. passenger seat separated from the male. Keys are on the hood. You want to tell me what's going on? Yeah, I don't know. It's just some days I, <laughs> I have really bad OCD. And okay. I just, I was just cleaning and straightening up the back of the van before and I was apologizing to him and saying, I'm sorry that I'm so mean because sometimes I have OCD and sometimes I just get really frustrated. Not like mean towards him. I just like. I guess my vibe is like I would be out here and be like in a bad mood. And I was just saying, I'm sorry if I'm in a bad mood. I've just been really stressed. I had so much work I was doing on my computer this morning. What do you do for a living? Um, well, I, I hate to get an organic juice bar, but I just hit my job. Okay. I was a nutritionist. That's, oh, what, okay. that's my that's job. Cool. And I just um, quit my job to travel across the country. And I'm trying to start a blog. Okay. So, so I've been building my website, so I've just been really stressed and he doesn't really believe that I could do any of it, so that's kind of been like a, I don't know, he's like a downer, I don't know, we've just been fighting all morning and and he wouldn't let me in the car before. And then Why I, wouldn't he let you in the car? Because you have your OCD? He told me I needed to calm down, yeah. <laughs> but I'm perfectly calm, I'm calm all the time and he really stresses me out and I just... <laughs> Morning. Well, why don't we do this? Why don't I sit you down in the back seat of my car? You're not in any trouble, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to be putting handcuffs on you. You obviously don't have any weapons. I'm going to get you into the air conditioning, let you take a breath, relax a little bit, and then I'll come back and talk to you in a few minutes, okay? Okay. All righty. Like I said, you're not in any trouble. So just go ahead and take a seat. What's that? You talked to Gabrielle, right? Yeah, I just spoke to her. Yeah. So, you want to do me a favor? Let's go ahead and get you to step out of the vehicle. Alrighty. Come on over here. You're not in any trouble right now. So, tell me what's going on. It, the shoes gets worked up sometimes, and I try and really distance myself from her. So, like, I, I lock the car and I walk away from her. What, what happened this morning is that she's trying to start up like her own little website blog and everything. So, I give her time. And I, we, we really had a nice morning, if, any, and if anything, but um, she just got worked up because we were trying to get going and get our day going because we want to go. Um, 
Mike Barge is pointing this up every time. Okay. You, you want to tell me about those scratches on your face? She had a cell phone in her hand. That's why I was pushing her away. Because I... She, she wanted to, I locked the keys so I could walk away. I, I said, let's just take a breather and let's not you know, go anywhere. Let's just calm down for a minute because she's getting worked up. And then she had her phone and was trying to get the keys for me. So I was batting away. I was just trying to... I know I shouldn't push, but I was just trying to push her away to go, let's, let's just take a minute, step back and breathe. And we see she got me with her phone. Can I see your hand? Oh, you got a mark right here. Oh, that's from a wire. That's from a wire? Yeah. You want to tell me about hitting that curb? Hitting the curb was her grabbing the wheel. She grabbed the wheel? Yeah. She said, I can't believe we're getting pulled over and then she grabbed the wheel. What about the speed? Did she take over the, did she no, take I over the pedal on you? If I was going fast, I'm sorry. No, it was probably just the, the moment of, I'm still shaking now. The adrenaline seeing the lights flashing up and then the her gripping the wheel. And, so if I sped up, I'm sorry about that. Or if I was speeding beforehand, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it took quite feet. a bit to catch up to you. So, oh, sure. yeah. I'm sorry about that. We're just going into the, the park again to get water because we have a six gallon water container to uh -huh. fill up. So we're just grabbing water for the hike. Okay. And we're just, I was trying to keep everything calm and quiet because there's plans still to go for our hike, but it's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Of course, of course. Do me a favor. You want to go ahead and just take a seat right over here on the curb sure. for me? And if I was speeding, I'm sorry. I want to apologize. You don't have anything in that pocket or anything like that, do you? Here. Nope. Just the wallet? Yeah. Alright. And then, do you mind lifting your shirt so I can check the waistband? Yeah. I got Turn around for me real quick. Perfect. Nothing. I just, I just no, want I to make you. sure. That's all, man. Go ahead. Do me a favor. Take a seat, alright? All right. Oh, do you have your ID on you? In the car. Do you want to come with me? No, no we'll just do this. Just go ahead and take a seat. You come with me. I'll give you Oh, you're fine. Uh, what's your first name? Brian. Brian? Is that a Latin spelling? B-R-I-N. Yeah, and L-A-U-N. L-A-U-N. And then your last name? L-A-U-N. L-A-U-N. B-R-I-E. D-R-I-E? Yep. Laundry? Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your date of birth, Brian? Crisscross applesauce, but can I just sit in the shade because I'm bald? Um, I'll, okay, it's okay. It's okay. I'll give you some shade. <laughs> Sound good? Alright, just hang tight for me. SO229. I need a 29 name and date of birth. First name Brian, layman spellings, last name Laundry, Lima Alpha Uniform, November. Delta, so Romeo, right. India. She was hyperventilating She's a little bit. She's saying that they don't drink, but at the point when you lit them up. They don't drink or anything. I, she I started was hitting just, him. Yeah, I was yelling at him, and then when and you turned your lights on, I like, kind of fucked his arm. Like, there's a position that she needs. She's saying why he hit the curb. You said it was, it was Gabby? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm really bad. It was Gabby? Yeah.
for our meditation stuff. But you tend to have a lot of anxiety and stress. <laughs> a lot of anxiety. And what's OCD. his name? Is it Brian? Is he usually pretty patient with you? Yeah. But I get it. it just makes me upset. I know that he definitely gets frustrated with me a lot. Way of taking my anxiety and bringing it down, but my ex-wife, especially my ex-wife, I'm just sharing. I know it's a little personal, but to help you understand. We would feed off each other's anxiety and spiral. You know what I mean? And it doesn't matter how much I loved her. It may be a bad for your soul. I'm just saying. I'm not telling you what to do with your life, but if you know you have anxiety, look at the look at the situations you can get in. You know what I mean? And we're not here to be mean to you or anything. Well, you, you know, they never. There's a first time, and then it usually. Let's just, we'll go see what Brian's saying, but I think you've heard everything now from... Eating Quick question, you said you were hitting him in the arm. Did you grab the steering wheel? No, I didn't. You did not touch, I, I the, didn't steering touch the steering wheel. but only, only, only for like a second, because I just saw the lights come on, and it was more just like, you're an idiot. Like, you know. But did you grab the steering wheel and like no. swerve or anything like no, that? No, no, no. Okay. I didn't touch the steering wheel at all. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close this door again. Do you have enough air back here, or do you want me to kick it up some more? Do you have any water? <laughs> I will see if I can find something. Okay, no worries. Thank okay. you. Okay. You wouldn't happen to have any water, would you? Oh, yeah. Can I get a bottle? Did you already give a statement to this officer? Uh, I've got nice. this the gentleman here. Yeah. This gentleman noticed that you had some marks on your, on your neck. Yeah. And she's got some marks on her, too. We're just trying to figure out what all happened. And I know you probably already told your story. This officer is probably going to be the one handling the whole case. You want to, you want to listen to what he has to say, and yeah, okay. and then you tell him, and tell him what happened. We, so we don't mind. Start at the beginning for me. Over. Start at the beginning. Yeah. Um, well, I don't want to go too far back, but we've been in uh, Beyond Land for the past like week or so, traveling okay. around. And the flies here are like pretty intense, so the flies have definitely been getting to her. And then my feet are dirty and everything, so I think that our little squabble started because we were, we were hanging out at the coffee shop, and when we got back to the van, there was some dirt and stuff in the van, and uh, I moved our food around, it was a little disorganized, so she gets a little... We take those Sorry about that. It's okay. Do you need any water? That's okay. It's hot out here. I was right? down, we were going to get water because we ran out, but oh, it's I okay. Some, no, it's all right. I don't like plastic bottles. It's okay. Thank you, though. We just had a little disagreement there. And this disagreement was just that she was getting a little worked up and I was saying, no, it's okay, thank you so much. As long as it's cold, that's good. <laughs> um, so it, just, it was just more of a disagreement and I just wanted to say... What was the disagreement about? It was, it was, I wouldn't even call it disagreement. It was just that I, I'm dirty and I can't change being dirty. Like I got dirty feet, I got sand in my flip flops and stuff like that. Um, it was that we were at the coffee shop for so long because we were there from nine to three. So yeah, there's a few little little things, little just little relationships. I, I don't know if you're in a relationship, but I'm sure you know. I've been married for over five years now. So. There's a lot of little things, right? Yeah, yeah I can go. Um, and we, I get it. We, yeah, we really, it was, we weren't physical before the point where I said, all right, let's let's just take a breather and, and like walk away for a minute. I'll lock the van up and I'll go for a walk this way, and you can go walk that, that way in the block. You know, because the moon. Uh, uh, what is it called? Moon flower? Right, yeah. You know, nice areas. You can go either way, it's all shaded. So let's go for a little walk and breathe or come back. It's pretty, yeah, we're happy with that. Um, but, but she's, I said, I'm not upset with her. But she got a little worked up and she had a phone in her hand and her keys and everything. And she wanted, not her keys, her, her rings. Mm -hmm. She had her rings, her phone. And I, I was holding on to the keys because I just, I didn't want to go anywhere. And my big fear is, I don't have my phone, I don't really, I don't have a phone, so she goes off without me, with a car, I, I'm on my own. <laughs> so, uh, I was saying, let's just go for a walk, and she was trying to get the keys for me, so I was just going, hey, just wait, back up, back up, and it doesn't she hit me, and I, I didn't, didn't get, I don't want to push you, but I didn't get, very, I didn't get overtly physical, I was just trying to keep her away and, and not get hit, and then I got really loud, and like, that's probably, if you ever was where I was going, no. Back up, get away, just give me a... Oh, okay, so, so I, you said you pushed her to create some distance, obviously, yeah. right? What happened after that? What got what got the scratches on your eye? The phone. The phone? The so you pushed her and she hit you? She was... I wasn't... I, it wasn't like a push and she jumped on me. She was, she was already... She was already... I don't want to... She was already swinging and I was... Yeah. A lot of angles, a lot of nails, a lot of rings. Yeah. You got... Three scratches on your neck. You got one on your left side.
inside your head. You've got one in your face here, and you've got four blood bleeding over there. So I just try to so put some two hands in here. Do you mind lifting up your right sleeve for me? I'm curious about something. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, tried a little bit in I suppose fingernails, but yeah, I'm not complaining. Absolutely. I'm not complaining about fingernails. Is it bruised or tender or anything like no, that? No, no, no. Okay. I'm fine, and I love Gabby. I hope she doesn't have too many complaints about me. <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, I, I feel bad I had to get so public. I was just trying to be loud to get some business. You know, I just try to make her calm down and be like, look, everyone's watching. And I'm like, stop this. <laughs> on it gets your heart rate up if I see my trust me it does me too and I'm the one <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. gets me going a little you probably bit can say well. hey buddy whenever <laughs> somebody walks up <laughs> so okay well. yeah do you know if she takes any she's, she's, she's crazy no. <laughs> no, um, no I don't think so yeah, no, no none that I know of Can I get your first name? Yeah, it's Gabrielle. Gabrielle, how do you spell that? G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E. And your last name? Peter. B-E-T. B-E-T? Oh, oh, P. M-E-T-I-T. I see. Oh. That's where you guys My come from. My license is Florida right now, but I'm from Florida. So that's where you have it out of currently. That's a 29. I need a 29 for a name and date of birth. First name Gabrielle. Golf, Alpha, Bravo, Romeo, India, Echo, Lima, Lima, Echo. Last name Tico. Papa, Echo. Tango, India, Charlie, Oscar. Washington, then down to Oregon, and then down to California. So I'm both 
part of California, did you say? I'm from a town just outside Sequoia National Park. Okay, you, been a good so you're going to be going through there? <laughs> we'll get good in the way of outdoors. <laughs> Go ahead. But no, it wasn't too bad at all. So I just got phone with one of those two witnesses. Okay. And I reported it. Do you want me to tell you what you said? Yeah. Real quick. Do you mind hanging with them for a minute? Yeah. So, get away from both of them. So, uh, he said that he never saw the male strike the female. He saw the male trying to lock her out of the vehicle. She even told us that he was trying to lock her out, told her to go take a walk. So that she was trying to get in. She eventually couldn't get in and actually clawed her way in through the driver's door. He says, I don't understand why she's doing that. Well, I think it's because it was the only door that wasn't locked that she could get through. So she's trying to get in over him. He's trying to disengage from her. I guess he hung her backpack on the back probably so she'd have her shit so that he didn't have to engage with her. Everything she's saying is the same thing. I haven't heard what he said, but if that's what he said, it's also what the witness is saying. The witness says, I never saw him hit her. I saw him shove her, but I couldn't tell if it was an aggression against her or a defense against her as far as her, you know, being the aggressor. So at this point, from what, unless the guy's screaming that he needs to go to jail and did something to this girl, it sounds to me like she is the primary aggressor. Yeah. Now the problem with her being the primary aggressor is in an incidence of domestic assault, be it a male or be it a female, we shall arrest. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they have to go to jail. We can do a citation if it meets one of three criteria, which one of them is that we can ensure that they're not going to um, further risk each other's safety. But the problem with that is they live in the same vehicle. That's what I was going to say. The and other part of it is... There was actually I'm, I'm an injury, too, uh, to the victim, which is him. Right. And I'm getting conflicting stories about why they hit the curb up here. Oh, what did he say why he hit the curb? Well, I watched... This is what I saw first saw him cross the double yellow. I was doing 42 miles an hour. I was, I don't know, probably two car lengths behind him, tapping my whales at him, trying to get his attention. They knew I was behind him. And then after he crossed the double yellow, he merged over into the right lane, and then out of nowhere, just boom, went and hit the curb. So did he tell you why? He said that she grabbed the wheel and turned it real hard. She said that she was hitting him in the arm. So. Sounds legit, I mean. I'm sure she, if I'm driving and my arm's on the wheel and I'm getting hit in the arm, I'm probably pulling out the wheel. Yeah. And I'm sure it was a little of both. I mean, usually the truth is somewhere between. He's probably trying not to say that he hit her because he probably doesn't want her charged with assault. Yeah. Domestic assault. He probably would rather say she pulled the wheel than hit, hit him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, fortunately for her, she... We, we cannot treat just because he's bigger and stronger, and even if he's not one of the best charges, we can't treat this differently than if it was a male on female violence. Yeah. And we're going to have to charge her. And um, we can do a citation if there's some arrangement that can be made to separate them. And then we have to let them know that there's no contact order in effect. Yeah. And we have to let him know the only way to drop it is to go into the police department during business hours and fill out a waiver. Which, by the way, what's it's today? Too late Thursday? Today. So it won't be till tomorrow. I know, there until noon, I think. Yeah. Which well, I'm sure he's going to want to drop it. Well, the other part of it is they said that they're on a, they've been on four or five months that they've been living out of this van together. Well, this is really bad news. Let's talk to him first. Yeah. Is this Ryan? Yeah. Did you, did you ask him yet to take pictures of him? Yeah. No, I haven't done any of that yet. Ryan, unfortunately, in the state of Utah, we don't have discretion on some things. Like, for example, if I pull you over for speeding and I want to give you a warning, I can do that because it's under Class A, it's a Class B or under. If I want to give you warnings for all kinds of stuff, I can. But there's a few things I can't. Like when I say I, please, I'm not in charge of that. One of the things that the state legislature doesn't give us discretion on is charges when it comes to a domestic assault. And it sounds like you guys are living together, so you, you meet the statute for domestic partners. And you do have injury, and both an independent witness, probably the next one we're going to talk to as well, which we haven't talked to yet, but one the one we did talk to, and your own companion, have made it clear that she was the primary aggressor, and that she was striking you, and you just received injuries. You haven't admitted to striking her, she has not admitted to you striking her, the witness did not see you strike her. So at this point, you're the victim of a domestic assault, that even, if you, bad. <laughs> even if you didn't want to pursue this... We don't have a choice. The best thing we can do to not, to a lot of
not that we have to charge her, it doesn't say we have to put her in jail. Okay? But it also says we have to separate through a no contact order. And we have to put her in jail if we cannot separate. And there's a little problem here, is you guys are out of Florida living in the bed together. How are we supposed to separate you guys? Now I don't want to take this small 20, what is she? Yes, a 22 year old. 22 year old blonde female hair, jail. blue eyes to jail. Yeah, you could definitely defend yourself against, but at the same time, we can't say because you're a male and she's a female, we can't treat this different than if you were the male hitting her. Well, you got to treat it the same. Yeah, no. So she's kind of in a tough spot. So unless you have an idea that. about how she could not go to jail and be separated, you have friends in town, somewhere she could stay. Tomorrow, if you want to, it's up to you. you can, can I go, go to jail? To, you can't because you don't have a charge for you. Now tomorrow, if you wanted to be get with her again tomorrow. I'm going to take your break again. If you want to be with her again tomorrow, because it's after five, so office is closed, you can go to the police department and fill out a waiver to drop the no contact order so you guys can still be together. But she's going to have a court date online in a week or two. She's going to have to show up for a court date online and answer. The prosecutor might drop it. She might say, if you, for example, if you're not willing to pursue it, that's your decision. The, 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 I just want to say, it definitely is, I'm not going to pursue anything. I'm not going to say I love her, it's just a little squabble. I'm sorry that I had to get so public. Um, but uh, so I just want to get like the checklist of things I got to do to get rid of this. So, so you want my back? Date. Well, she'll get a paper with a court date. How do I get rid of it? <laughs> well, the court date has to be attended in order for them to decide whether they need to continue or drop it. The first is just an initial appearance to say, are you who we think you are? Yes. Do you understand the charges that's been brought against you? Yes or no? Yes or no? The answer. Do you have an attorney? Yes or no, do you need one? And then from there, she can she can ask to speak with the prosecutor. The prosecutor might be contacting you and say, hey man, I, I know she's 110 pounds soaking wet and you're a big strong guy. And we understand you're not even wanting to pursue this because the cops have to follow the statute. How you like what we're in the interest of you and justice for you as a victim, what do you think? And they can decide to pursue a prosecutor. Or they can decide to drop her, or they can decide to give her a plea and make it kind of go away and she behaves from now. But that still has, does not eliminate the first court appearance that she has to attend, which thankfully for you guys is going to be online. So, you don't have to, so if you're out of town, so here's the thing, if you're out of town and she doesn't come into her court appearance online, they can suspend the driver's license, they can issue a warrant for her, so she needs to play ball. And yeah, yeah. Does that no. make sense? Yeah. And remember, her team, me and her and her team, I'm sorry about all this, I apologize again, but so she's got her online court date, just uh, we acknowledge that she's hurt, and then she's got the one for the... Well, we, there's automatically right now, there's something called a no contact order in place. Yeah, From this point yeah, forward, yeah. until tomorrow, if you wish to drop it, you have to go to the 217 East Center Street, Mod City Police Department. I've got all the papers. And you have to ask them to give it to you. You want to fill out a waiver that you're requesting a, wave, a waiving of the contact order, no contact order. No contact order means she cannot come into contact with you, she cannot talk to you, she cannot text you, she cannot go onto any premises to drop your client, she cannot go to your vehicle. And until you drop that, or until a court date, if you don't drop it, it will stay in effect until midnight on the day of court. And then that gives you time to get a protection protect order, a long-term one, if you feel like you need one. It sounds like you don't even want this one. So tomorrow, they open at 8, you can go into the police department, you can call the waiver, they can remove it, then you can say, hey babe, where you at, let me pick you up. Now, we're hoping not to put her in jail, but if she doesn't have somewhere to go tonight to be separate from you, then where are we supposed to I can't talk to her now because it's separation, right? Yeah. So, tell me this. Do you guys have enough money for like a hotel room or anything like that? Because what we could do is we'd cite her for this, and then I'd give her a ride over to whatever hotel you guys is choosing. And you can pick her up there tomorrow if you and want you, to know what they On your way to go pick her up, you stop over there at the PD, sign the paperwork that they're requesting, and then you can go pick her up quite literally within minutes. Unless you know someone else in town that's a friend that you can stay with. Yeah. You know, unfortunately not, I, I don't, and I guess that... Man, I should hit the... I don't want her to go to jail. Well, it'd be... If she goes to jail, it's like, uh, it, that, that, that goes down somewhere instead of her going to a hotel, right? If you did a um, citation, it'd be... It, it kind of depends. So if she goes to jail, they're going to book her. They'll take a fan friend, they're going to go on a criminal history. And then if they, if, if they don't convict her, then it will just show that it was dismissed. On, it will it'll show up in a criminal history, but the charge was dismissed. If she was found guilty, it'll show up that she was guilty of criminal history. But the charge, will, the charge itself will show up on her criminal history until she gets the expunged. Now, even if we give her a ticket, we're still going to take a fingerprint and it's still going to show up. Either way, it's still going to show up. There's no way 
around in Class A. Or is this Class B? This is Class B. But Simple. they do require fingerprint on them. Yeah. Okay, so the other part is, is if you contact her or she contacts you, she can be charged with a Class A. Well, which is a little bit different, but it doesn't help the situation. If you were to contact her and she responds to you, then she can get a new charge yeah. for violating the No contact order doesn't restrict you, it restricts her. So if you go talk to her and we find out and you're not in trouble, she'll be in trouble. So it's going to be super interesting. Does that all make sense? No, I'm getting it all. It's a lot. I really quick. No, no, I'm getting it all. I'm just trying to figure out a way through. You don't know anyone in town? You get to figure out law? No, I don't know anyone in town. If she went... She... Oh, I don't think she can. I'll take her she's the aggressor. No. There's a winter shelter. I'm curious. You can find out. Say, hey, she doesn't have to go. If you did the citation, she, like, say she drove off in the... She could drive off in this car. We could give you a ride somewhere. I got my backpack. It sucks for you. I got my backpack. You can spend I, the night. You want to drive me to Delicate Art? Does she have a good driver's license? Yeah, she's going to get you this driver's license, yeah. yeah. You yeah. Know, with your vehicle? And, yeah, she can. Well, then you'd kind of be homeless for the night. Not and I mean, I can't talk to her at all. Well, and I've got to do the, the thing so I can't go camping. We can tell her what it is that she needs to do to get, to get through all this and then let her know what your plan is. Here, here's the problem, though. If we take you up to Delicate Art, you're going to be hoofing it from Delicate Arch all the way down to Moab Center Street so that you can yeah. fill out that paperwork because if you're not there by noon tomorrow, you're going to be looking at Monday morning. It's early on Friday. Yeah. You'd be looking at Monday morning before you could actually see her again. Again, we're not trying to make your life hard. No. This is written in statute. There's nothing yeah, a lot of about it. It's designed to protect victims of domestic assault. Not everybody's the same. This is different yeah. than normal, but we have to treat everything the same. Very little money we have for sure. Um, you want me to? I'll call CK then. Just see if CK will take you for the night. I'll, I'll see if they'll if they'll take you or one of them. Because they can figure it out for CK. Oh, actually, CK will take yeah. him as a victim of the best assault. CK will take you, and they yeah. will help you tomorrow. And you're like a block and a half away from the peak. Let's see if okay. CK will take him because they took. They actually put up. Actually, they didn't take a guy, but they got a hotel for a guy last time. Yeah, I'll do that. CK, we might get you a hotel. What she does... I'm, I might be sleeping outside in the sleeping bag. No, no. So, like, I don't no, need no, a hotel. I'm just it, saying... Uh, I think CK will get you a hotel. If you want her to have the van, we don't care. It's up to you. But... It doesn't look good on her. Yes, this is Officer Robbins with the Home City Police Department. How are you doing this afternoon? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. So I just did a uh, domestic and the male is going to be our victim. Is there any way that you can help us set him up with a place to stay tonight? Okay. 1099, yeah. Yes, please. Thank you. Well. All right. So the after hours guy isn't there at their office right now. He's gonna run from his house over there and we're gonna get y'all lined up. Don't worry about it, this is the phone call that they wait on. So don't don't feel like you are making anybody do anything extra on your behalf. So we're trying to make this as easy as possible. We're not wanting to take her and book her or anything like that. No, I really, really appreciate it. And I know how rough this stuff can be. Like I said, I've been married for five and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, believe me, if I were to say that me and my wife haven't had our share of spouts, I'd be lying to you. She lives with anxiety. I live with the woman. No, both of us are really... I know. I, her anxiety elevates my Yours. anxiety. And sometimes it that's just... That's why I just... That's why I'm like, I gotta, just, I gotta walk away, I gotta breathe, just and put in a back car as even then. You know, but... I'm, I'm not gonna try and sit here and give you life. No, no, no. Yeah, You've yeah. been on this whole thing <laughs> almost as long as what I have. There's nothing I can tell you that's gonna really make a difference, but at the end of the day, I, I'm sorry that this has happened. I'm sorry that it went to this extent. No, no, no. I'm sorry. To, I'm, I'm sorry. Can I get my key and make like a little bag? If you can grab me something? Yeah. Is that alright? Would you mind watching for me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, if you don't mind doing it from over here, we don't want you to get hit in the road. Okay. So, thank you. It does have marks on it. The witnesses say it would cause, like, to slap it. And even you say you slapped it, and it were against the curve. And I don't have 
than the one saying he actually punched him aggressively. It sounds like he was shoving in a manner that was probably more consistent with trying to prevent him from entering the van or to get space from you, not to assail you. That makes sense. So, if the tables were turned and he was beating on you and you were shoving him, of course we're going to look at it like, oh, of course, she's defending herself to get away from this guy. So we're, we're kind of looking at the same way with him. We have to treat both Mary and him a bigger male and your small female. The law doesn't say, hey, Officer Pratt, Officer Robbins, you can treat people different based on gender under the same you can. Even if it makes no sense, that you, you, you probably could not physically destroy this man. Hey, how's it going? Oh, that that's fine. I'm I'm still gonna be here for a few minutes dealing with this, so we have almost as much time as we need. <laughs> so. His name's going to be Brian, B-R-I-A-N, last name Laundry is L-A-U-N-D-R-I-E. And Laundry? Yeah, well, it's not Y, it's I-E at the end. Yes. They were at one at Moonflower, the organic grocery store down the street from you guys, and they got into a heated argument. Both of them were saying it was over petty stuff. Um, he told her to take a walk so that she could cool off. She refused. Broke into the car after he locked her out of it. She started trying to slap and scratch him. He pushed her away. They both got in the vehicle, took off, and I found him out here next to him. charging her with uh, domestic assault. So they, there's going to be a protection order set in place between the two of them until he's able to get over to the PD tomorrow because he doesn't want to pursue it, but I don't have a choice in this, as I'm sure you are well aware. So he's going to be wanting to go over to the PD first thing tomorrow morning as they open up to get the protective order removed. But that doesn't fix tonight. They both have Florida licenses. Of course. suspect in this, would you be able to put her up for the night? Okay. I figured, I figured, I just, I had to make sure I at least asked. It's better safe than sorry. So, I didn't know if that would make your life any easier or any tougher on it, so... Awesome. And if you if it's easier for you to just 
send me a text with a location, that works just as fine too. Alright, it sounds like fine. Thank you. What was your, what did you say your name was again? Peter Phillip? Phil. Okay. Alrighty, Phil. Talk to you later. Hey, Brian. Yeah. Can I take two minutes of your time real quick back here? So, because there was an assault that took place and you were obviously showing signs of the strikes, do you mind if I take pictures of the injuries that you sustained? I know it's not super severe. I mean, you want me, you want me to call, I mean, I can call the EMS if you want me to. You don't seem like you want to, to go no, that far. If you want to take a photo, you can take a photo. Then. Yeah, I, I need to take pictures for my evidence because otherwise it's going to be your say, her yeah. say, my say, and the court's going, oh, no. So yeah. I have to do this part of it already. So it's just going to be a couple of pictures. Is your okay? Yeah, it's a microphone. Do you not have yeah. where it is? Yeah, okay. Without the telephone, where yeah, is just, it? Yeah, just hang on. Go ahead and tell me. Yeah, go ahead and tell me if you don't mind me grabbing it. I can grab it because it's like it's in a spot. Why don't I go with you? Where are we going okay. in the car? Great face, neck, one of his uh, one of his ring fingers, I think he's got the scratch on it. And then you, you saw her later on. Yeah, I saw the ring. Well, I was trying to build some consistency between the stories. Oh, sure. Alright. And then let me see your hand, because that yeah, I'm gonna get your hand. Oh, that one, that right there. You said this is from a wire, but I'm going to take a picture of it just in case and I'll document that yeah, you're saying that's from a wire, not from her. It's just I want to document everything. You know? And then your right arm. Um, you have anything on the other arm, on your back, chest, anything like that? Let me get your neck real quick as well. Do you want to kind of tilt your head off to the right and look up? This way? And then look up. There you go. I don't know. Yeah. And then, this is just for precautions. You mind lifting your shirt for me? I mean, we can go back here if you want some privacy. I just, I want to, like I said, I want to do a very thorough job. I want to make sure that you don't have any additional injuries you don't need to know about. I don't know how I'm, I'm good, right? You mind here? Put your collar down for me a little bit. On the other side. All right. That works. So, I talked to my contact over there at People that can help with hotel rooms and stuff like that are out of the office at this point in time. We've got a couple people trying to get it all lined up because certain people have access to the corporate card, he doesn't. So we're trying to get everything lined up. This is going to take us a few minutes to get that lined up, get her uh, cited and stuff like that. Like I said, we're going to be handing her a piece of paper that has a court summons, date, stuff like that, and she'll be able to give you all that information. Yeah. You want to go ahead and finish getting your stuff with yeah. this fine uh -huh. gentleman here? She's got her cell phone. She's calling her parents just to feel better. She doesn't want to not be with him tonight. There's That's no choice said. in the matter. Yeah. So. So Brett's nothing was calling the supervisor, at least that's what
got a swollen right eye. Scratches. So we gotta go find it. this question is going to determine what happens next. But the only person who can answer this question is you. Mm -hmm. Think very hard before you answer the question. Do not quickly answer it. Think very hard. When you slapped him those times, were you attempting to cause him physical pain or physical impairment? Was that what you were attempting to do to him? No. What were yeah. you what were you attempting to do? What was the reason behind the slapping and stuff? What was what was it you were attempting to accomplish by slapping? I was trying to get him to stop telling me to pump it. Well, it doesn't sound to me like she attempted to injure him. It's your call. This is 100% your call. I support you either way. I'll let you get back to your own parents, okay? Okay. Judges and everyone can, can judge me for this. I am looking at a 110 pound female and her fiance who have no means to be separated. He doesn't want to pursue it. She's not a threat to him, more than slight abrasions from her fingernails. I I don't care if, if we use the actual letter of the law to, to not charge, but I also don't care because it literally does possibly make perfect sense to go full on domestic assault the whole thing. This is uh, your opportunity to make the decision. Let's
got this? I'm making this decision. I'm going to side him. I'm going to go okay. follow through the first. Would you feel more comfortable here. handling that guy? Yeah. Go handle that guy. Go handle that guy. Okay. If you're more comfortable. Well, I'm. it's six one way, half dozen the other. It's up to you. I mean, it's a headache whether I go left or it's a headache whether I go Look, right. Another option is to not charge them but separate them for the night. If they find themselves together again, what is it to you? You separate them. You provide it for his safety. If he doesn't have enough sense to stay away and you, you got him separated, it's on him. You can separate him and say, don't, don't let us go off till tomorrow. If, if they don't let it go off and we hear about it, we'll hear about it. They're camping in the park tonight, but like, no. And if there's some fighting going on, you already was Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah. You already gave him a chance. What you can't do, by law, is separate someone and say, if we hear from you again, we're going to arrest one of you. Because then if one of them really needs help, they may not call police and they get help. The law says you cannot, literally, you may not say, we get more problems with you guys tonight. One of you is going to jail. You can't threaten like that. Right. It's true because if you stop, you want to call the police to get help. Does that make sense? All right. So, go full or nothing or in between and separate them and kind of give them the nod, the wink, like, hey, you know, just stay separate. It's up to you. I'm going to go handle that. You got very capable help with you here, and I trust you. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're still going to be going through. I do need some things from you though. Sure. Do you mind if I get a picture of your driver's license? Yeah. Of course. I was thinking it was in parts like that. Yeah. This is me. Uh oh. I don't know if man has hair. <laughs> you said that this is still your mailing address, right? Mm -hmm. Still the right way. Oh yeah, no problem. Have a good day. Uh, my phone number? that this can feel like it's a nightmare, but you're coming out as the golden flower on top of the night, okay? So, you're gonna be taking the van tonight, and you're gonna go somewhere else. I am going to get him lined up for the hotel room tonight. I want you guys to stay away from each other. For both of you guys the same. From what you told me and what he told me, you guys have a bunch of little things that are building up, building up, building up, and finally the little string that you guys were tight walking on the road tonight. Does that sound about right? So, I just want everybody to breathe, get a chance away from each other, go eat a meal, talk to your parents, whatever it is you gotta do. So, 
like I said, that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. Hold on. This is Officer Robbins. Is this your cell phone that I called? Okay. Okay. Well, I, go ahead and save my number into that phone, and I'll save your number, or this number, into my phone. That way I can contact the on, on duty after hours person. So. Because I had, I literally had to Google it, so. Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate your time. Alright. So, I've got him a hotel room tonight. So, here in just a minute, I have to keep you guys separated. For right now, don't contact each other, or don't wave at him. Okay, do you want me to say anything to him? Because I can do that for you. You want me to let him know that you love him and that you'll see him tomorrow and stuff like that? I can do that Make for sure you. Make sure he doesn't forget a phone charger. That's what he Oh, he's bad about that too? Yeah. Okay, I'll make sure that he has a phone charger. Okay? <laughs> and if I have anything else, please keep your cell phone on so I can call you if I have any questions. Alrighty? Okay. Alright, so just kind of sit tight for me real fast and then we'll talk to you all right, Brian, a couple things. A couple things? A couple things. One, I got your hotel room tonight. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's All right. outside. So, I like the outside. <laughs> number two, and this is probably the biggest one. She claims that she did not have intent to hurt you when she was slapping at you. So, technically speaking, it does not fit the letter of the code. So... I'm not going to be charging her with DB domestic violence. Exactly. So, this is what I am going to do, however. I'm not going to release you guys together. I want you guys to stay away from each other tonight. Okay? She's agreed to it. Take some time to yourselves. You guys both have the exact same story as to what led up to the incident. So, taking some time tonight, I specifically. I really appreciate that, Johnson. Taking tonight away from each other is going to be the major breaker in all of this. I think that'll help you guys, especially tomorrow when you guys meet up. So she does have a couple of messages for you. One, she says she loves you. She wants, she's looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Two, don't forget to cell phone charge. Yeah, good. He watched me fumble around the entire two laps around the car to find one. Yeah, find one? Find one. Okay. <laughs> the other thing is, is, I don't want you guys to contact each other. No, okay, unless, I was running, unless world when he, when he said that I uh, that she gonna text me or whatever, I was gonna send her a message. To say, Please don't message me, but I love well, you. But yeah, but, but tonight, don't tonight, do anything. Yeah, and I'm with. She's you. passing on her love and saying good night and stuff like that. All that in the stuff that I do to my wife too. Okay, so I appreciate it coming. From just, you. just <laughs> <laughs> so don't just try to not contact each other unless, like okay. I said, first chattering, something happens, you guys have to jump in the car right now and drive back to Florida because something happens to the parents. That kind of circumstance. Yeah, you go. Exactly. Other than that, just mm -hmm. have a meal to buy yourself, take your breath. You're going to be in a hotel room watching TV. It's probably been a few months since you actually got to sit down and relax in some air conditioning and watch TV. So, take some time to you guys to yeah, yeah, take a shower, man. You, you got to change the clothes. You got some Tonys in there, right? All right, good, good, good. Because they're going to have everything that you need. You shouldn't be and all that good stuff. All right? Her main concern is make sure that you have a cell phone card so you guys can come to one. Okay? I really appreciate So, I am going to walk her over here to the car. Okay? And if you'll just go stand over here in front of his pickup real quick, we'll get her out of here and I'll be right over here. All right? You're right in here. Absolutely.
Alrighty, Gabrielle, you want to step out for me? As you can see, I have keys in my hand, which is good news, okay? Okay. So, something that I do, that I emphasize to him, and I don't know if I emphasize to you or not, don't text each other tonight. He wants to pass on the same message you passed to him. I'm really looking forward to talking to you again, but I told him, and you, unless there's earth-shattering emergency news, don't text tonight, okay? Even with the good nights, I love you. He's saying good night now. He's saying he loves you now, and you guys can talk tomorrow morning, okay? He's gonna go to the hotel. I'm gonna give you the keys to the van. Alrighty. So, here's that. I'm giving him a ride over to the hotel. Okay? So, everything's gonna be okay. Will it be a far drive for me to get him in the morning? I'm, I'm just curious. I'm not gonna tell you where he's gonna be at I, tonight. I like I said, I, I want you guys to be separated. I, but I, I can just, tell you this. I just don't usually drive the van, so I just wanna make sure it's not like far away. No, 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 okay. no, no. It's. Okay. It's basically from here to Moonflower. Okay. Okay? It's not far at all. So, let's get you in the van. Let's get you on your way. Alrighty? Do you want that Gatorade, by the way? Okay. You got enough water? <laughs> also, something I want you to know. Here, stand over here real, for, real fast for me. If you go over to City Market, they have a list of places where you can get yourself a shower for like four or five bucks, something like that. They're pretty cheap. A place where you can shower, decompress, de-stress a little bit. Alrighty. Um, yeah, I just showered yesterday at one of those. Well, you didn't have today happen yesterday, so yeah, I, it does my wife wonders. So when she gets stressed out, it's like get in the shower. Come on, it does get in the shower. Really relaxing. Go take a shower, relax. Take some time for yourself, and like I said, don't text each other tonight. Text each other tomorrow morning after your eyes open up and you're fully awake at your your morning routine, okay? Alright, you have a good night, okay? Thank you. Alright, all right. You ready for a ride? My door's open, just climb in the back seat for me. Back seat? Yeah. You can put your backpack back there too. Thank you. I appreciate it. Sorry about that approach. I don't know what the hell I was doing. Thanks It's alright. It was it was an interesting pull in, so. Thanks, Daniel. Daniel, by the way, if I didn't no. formally introduce myself, I'm Daniel on 229, so if you hear that, you know who you guys are. Ryan. See, I hear you guys all the time. I've never this too much. So. What's your first name? Daniel. It was nice meeting you guys. What's that? So you listen to Rob Zombie. You like it? I was wondering if you get to play your own personal music in the Heck song. yeah, dude. I got my own oh, phone hooked up to this you, thing. Can you just jam it all day? Yeah. Hey man, it's not it's too hard to serious. go a few hours without having anything interesting happen or anything to get the old blood pumping real good, you know what I mean? So. I stuck my hand just because I didn't want to scare you when you pulled over. Oh, no, no, you're. The thing that up. wasn't a traditional stop to say the least, so uh, don't feel bad. SO2T9. already know. Um, she did want to pass on her good nights and loves yous and stuff like that, okay? And she understands that I don't, I didn't tell her where you're staying because like I said, I'm trying to keep you guys away from each other for tonight. Where did you say I was going? Say that again? I, where did you say I was going? The, I didn't, I just told her that you were going to a hotel, okay? So, um, like I said, it's my request not legally obligated to hold to it, but I want you guys to take some time away from each other because it will make you, you know world a difference. Oh, you're not in any trouble? You got handcuffs on? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you that I'm taking you to the jail. No, I told you I'm taking you <laughs> to the hotel. So, like I said, my main concern, I told her to go take a shower like I told you to, because she seems a lot like my wife. And things that really works for my wife is when she gets stressed out to go take a long hot shower. So I gave her 
a place to go where she can get a hotel room or not a hotel room but um get a shower tonight for like four or five bucks really cheap so no problem they do work on her too well i've got quite a few like i said my wife has really really bad bad anxiety and she takes medication for it daily and sometimes it's just not enough sometimes it builds up and it, it happens i mean i think definitely uh, well, I will say this. When my wife got put on the medication, within a week, I saw a complete turnaround in her attitude, her demeanor. I mean, she wasn't nearly as aggressive or angry or anything like that. It was it was a considerable difference in her day-to-day -day life. It, it made her quality of life better even. You know what I mean? No, I, I know what you're saying. And it's made my quality of life a lot better too <laughs> because I don't have her being as stressed. I know that I, five and a half years of marriage, I know it's not very long, but at the same time, you learn a lot in the first five years. <laughs> How long have you guys been together? Uh, I, would, I would say, well, we've known each other since the start of high school. But, you know, in our relationship, we've been three years. Wow. Uh, a little while. So definitely the five months of traveling together. I've been like a green, but we're also like right on top of each other. I used, to, I used to drive a truck. What's that? I used to be a commercial motor vehicle driver, you know, the big trucks. And I took my wife with me and we would easily spend a couple months on end without going home or anything like that being cooped up in a little 8x8 cage is what I called it because you, you didn't have any time to yourself so to speak you didn't have time to you know you're going through Arizona you can't just turn off the road and go see the Grand Canyon or anything like that so That was one of the major advantages of having her with me was I could say, hey, I'm hungry, can you get me something to eat? She, she was able, because I was driving and she wasn't, she was able to go back, get into the cooler, make us lunch or whatever, you know? So, there was that as an advantage. If you think that it's be better to do this before, I always go, I think you're wrong. I think it's a lot better to do it. it makes life easier. Yeah. Here. I'm just shy of two years living out here, but my grandfather's lived out here for like 40. So I've been through here a couple of times. But you know, growing up in California, have you ever been there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, two years ago, we did the cross country trip, and uh, we went to I love the I love driving the one. I absolutely love it. But <laughs> we're really looking forward to getting back there. It's beautiful here, but the desert is definitely different than the forest. Coming from like New York and being on the Appalachian Trail, yeah, all trees and waterfalls and rivers, and you come here and it's gone. Well, if you hit the, the if you take the 80 across to get into California, it takes you up over Donner Pass and into Sacramento. It, it's not any different at all. But you said you're going to be going up to Oregon to see her yeah. grandmother or her grandmother's friend. Yeah. So you'll be probably. Excuse me. You'll probably be coming down the five. You won't be able to tell the difference between California and Oregon up there, yeah, no, except for the fact that there's going to be a sign that says "Welcome to California." <laughs> but at the same time, since you're going to be coming from the east side of Oregon, you're going to be driving through Oregon and going, "There's no difference between Utah." Yeah. It's actually yeah. desert in the south east corner of Oregon. It's a lot of high desert atmosphere, like what this is. It's not the Red Rock or anything like that, but. It's just, there's nothing out there for 120 miles, it seems like. What was your favorite part of, like, um, growing up in California? I mean, like, parks, right? Just because I was a big tiger. Parks? Like, tiger growing up? Look, if you don't hit Sequoia National Park while you're in California, you are doing yourself a disservice. If you don't go and see Yosemite while you're in California, you're doing yourself a disservice. Uh, I regret not being there. I stayed there for, for 
three nights. It's, it's like coming to Utah. You come here with the intention of one or two days, and then it turns into a week, and you're like, well, what happened to the time? Yeah, trust me, I get it. <laughs> Building the van was so great just because the Nissan Century, if you tried to camp out somewhere, you can't go in like the sleepover Walmart type situations. Yeah. Now it's all the land, and it's, it's wherever you I'm want. Watch them shooting stars as you go to bed. It's, it's, uh, it's an obvious example. My radio was going off. But uh, no, Sequoia National Park, there is nothing like it. Gotta see the General Sherman tree. You gotta go and see uh, Morro Rock and climb to the top. If you like hiking, it's about a mile and a half hike. Well worth it. Awesome. Gotta do it. Um, it's really, really cheap for their tent sites up there. Do you have a, a National Park Service pass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. It's, um, that thing is the dream, it's $90, or, no, $80 once, and it's like, you go to three parks that already pays for it, and it's like, <laughs> 15 <laughs> Exactly. Well, the other thing of it is, with that drive, if you go through Yosemite, you'll drop down into Fresno, and then you'll turn off to go to uh, Kings Canyon National Park. If you drive through Kings Canyon National Park, the road literally takes you th through to Sequoia National Park, and the Kings Canyon is actually bigger than the Grand Canyon. Oh, damn. Yeah, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. And it is a sight to behold. I'll tell you what. And then you're straight into Sequoia. So that sounds like and then it, yeah, it takes you straight into Sequoias. And then when you get into, um, I think they call it the, I think they call it Sierra Highway still up there, but you'll take that down and you'll pop up into a town called Three Rivers. It's where I'm from. Three Rivers? Yep. So it wasn't terribly far from the right? Uh, my house, I think the furthest I lived away from it was like 12 miles from the entrance. Oh, man. There you go. I just hope you don't get motion sickness because it's, it's, I think I counted it out to like 32 hairpin turns and it's about <laughs> 25 miles an hour the whole way up and down. It's know. very, very slow. It takes about an hour to travel that 30 miles, 35 miles, whatever it is, but it's worth it. Phil called for me. He did, yes. This is Brian Laundry. Alright. So he's gonna get you all set up with your hotel room and he's gonna take care of it from here. Alright. Well, Alright. So and like I said, just remember my requests. It'll yeah, make no. I think it'll make a big difference in you guys' next couple weeks at the very least. I really appreciate it. No Thank problem. you so much. For, for everything. No problem. It's nice to meet you, Brian. Nice yeah. to meet you. Have a good one. All Number one news, Channel 7.